Okay, so what I want to talk about now is this big problem system, <clears throat> kind of a way of putting together a treatment plan, kind of a clinical reasoning tool to organize the material you're going to see in the, elect, uh, the, EM, the EMR, the chart kind of thing, because you'll find <clears throat> when you start going out there, especially for the first time, you look at that EMR uh, and you look at all the stuff going on in there. <clears throat> In their chart, um, it's going to be overwhelming because you, you're kind of taught in school like one thing, oh, this is what I do with MS, this is what I do with Parkinson's, and you're just trying to get a good understanding of what to do with those specific diagnoses, <clears throat> and you see that first client, and it'll be like everything together. They all have MS, they have MI, they'll have heart disease, they'll have arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, all these different medications. It's like, ah, oh, where do you begin with all these problems, all these precautions? Um, this is a way to begin, and I think you've done some of this in terms of developing a problem list. If you get a good problem list, this is kind of the, the heart of this, the big problems. Um, you, you will uh, have a good starting point. It will really help you organize yourself, organize your thinking, because um, you don't really think like this. It's kind of like thinking like an OT at first, but after you do this, this big problem, this problem list kind of method, it will start to become automatic and you'll start to use it when you don't even realize you're using it and life will be so much easier for you when you're trying to design a really good treatment plan for your clients whether it's pediatrics or home health or rehab, whatever it is um, this is kind of a way of getting at it <clears throat> also, and this is how you're going to be doing your midterm midterm and your final exam, you'll have cases and you'll have to use this big problem system to organize your plan, your treatment, your goals kind of way of doing it and we'll be using a version of this when you come back in the fall for upper extremity as well. So it's just a good way to kind of think about and organize yourself for, to get uh, a treatment kind of plan. And it also has these different parts to it. The problems is the problem lists. We're listing functional problems uh, that are relevant to the client. We don't care about problems that aren't relevant to the client. And we're trying to break it down to specific uh, tasks things that OTs work on. You're getting at that with these modified FIM scores, uh, upper body dressing, lower body dressing, um, transfers on and off the toilet. Really kind of break it down these little, little tasks that are measurable. And measurable is the key thing to show the insurance and providers that you can make a difference in kind of a measurable, clean kind of way. So that's what the problem list is. <clears throat> the baseline measure is uh, the measure how much assist they, use, they need usually. There's a lot of different ways of getting a baseline measure as we kind of did in the TSA way back. Um, but mostly for the most part, most part in this class, we're going to be using the modified FIM scores to measure. We use pain levels, outpatient clinics, in large part when we come back. Um, but here we're going to use these modified FIM scores. Interventions, we're going to think assistive technology interventions, mostly in this class. I'm not really getting into the whole exercise thing much at all until the fall. Um, think about is it a good fit or a bad fit? That's part of your interventions. And then the goal. What is the goal? Um, so here we go, and that kind of breaks it down. This, this will give you an example. This is what the reading was about. I'll go back and look at that narrative lessons book if you haven't, because it really breaks how to do this down. And, and again, this is something you're going to have to know for your exam. Um, I have copies of that book if you never bought one. Um, I think there's copies in the library as well. But anyway, the problem list what are the problems that are relevant to this client? Uh, function kind of center, center problems. Keeping this really simple, we're not saying they have. Uh, Parkinson's disease, that's like a medical thing. We're thinking about the functional problems. What can't they do? Can't get their socks on, can't dress their lower body, can't get their shirt on, can't get on and off that toilet, can't make a meal, whatever it is. So keeping it really simple, let's say the problem with this person, he wants to get his socks on by himself, that's meaningful to him, that's something he needs to do. So the problem, just we're taking one, usually it's like a list of problems, just lower body dressing. How do we measure that? 
use our little cheat sheets. We're doing watching the video, seeing the score of this person, what, how much help they need. Uh, let's say they're dependent. What's the intervention? We're going to give them a sake. You think that's the ticket? Give them a sake. We think he'll be able to do it. Um, and then what is the goal? So the goal goes right back to the problem. I mean, are they connected on the TSA? Probably not. Uh, but client will dress lower body independently with device, modified FIM kind of language, in two weeks. I'm going to teach him how to use the sake, and I think in two weeks he's going to be able to get his socks on, and then everything else, he's, he can already do his pants, his underwear, his, his shoes, it's just those socks. So he'll be able to get dressed uh, independently with a device in two weeks. Okay, so let's move on here. What we're going to do is actually do one, this is like a lecture activity. If you do this home, definitely try to do this. Break it down. We're going to do it for Johnny. Remember Johnny from the story, Legs? He was the guy that was uh, couldn't read, quite destitute, uh, mother had mental health issues, condom issues, and he was really struggling with just about everything. Could not figure out how to get that prosthetic on. It really impacted his whole life. So we're going to do, for him, we're going to do lower body dressing, toilet transfer, toileting, two different things, toileting, toilet transfer. If you look at your FIM scores, your cheat sheet, you'll see that toileting is mostly the hygiene and, and managing your pants. Toilet transfer is just can you get on and off that toilet. Shower transfer, can you get in and out of the shower, the shower bench, shower chair. Bathing, can you bathe your whole body. You get measures, make it an educated guess for each one of these. Think of interventions for each one, and then your goals. All right, so that is that. That's the big, try that. We'll do more of that to get rid of it for the midterm. Um, now I'm gonna go back to the story ideas. When we talked about different stories, the idea of thinking about somebody's future story of health. This is what good OTs do. They see the person, their life and stories. Oh, this is what you were like before you came to the hospital. This is what you're like right now. You're kind of uh, in crisis. And this, most important, importantly, where are you going to be? Where do you think we can get you? These are your goals. We can get you back to doing those things you like to do. We just have to do them differently or, or whatever it is. Um, different kinds of tools we use to kind of get at that. Um, where they were from, where they are. What we're doing with this is we're kind of creating these stories just through images to kind of, just to kind of practice how to do this. Um, again, this is something you have to kind of learn kind of moving forward. Um, let's do Francis. This is an example. Do you remember Francis? That was like the first story you ever read in Human Movement. He was the older gentleman that had been in the war. He was an alcoholic. His wife and daughter, I think, had left him. He had issues around uh, falling and his shoulder, that sort of stuff. Um, we're going to break his life down into these three different stories. Where he was before the OT saw him, before I saw him, where he was when the OT did see him, and then this future story of health. Okay, client story. We all, these are the kind of things you use to kind of develop this story, find out his story. So this is where he's coming from. He was in the war. Remember he like the last day of the war, that amazing story, how we didn't shoot the German soldier and the soldier and they saved him. He was an alcoholic, worked in the mill, <clears throat> had this child with his wife who later left him. Story two, where was he at when I saw him? He was falling. He uh, had a hard time getting out, getting the mail. Um, he was kind of destitute in his home, did not want to go to the hospital. That was his biggest fear. Um, Story three, this future story, where does he need to go to find juncture, to get his life back, to get to, you know, get you back so you can get the mail again, so you can mow your lawn, plow your driveway, make that furniture that you love to do. This is the future story with him. So what we're doing is we're doing a future story, and we're going to do it. Uh, I'll give you different options, the characters in the story that you can do this, uh, or the, the dancer, you could do it on her. Think of these three stories and try to get some images, two or three images off the internet while we'll vision these three different stories. Okay, here's the lecture questions. That's what we're doing Thursday, and that is it for today.